Day two of Judge Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court hearing kicks off today with more protests, but we're going to discuss the issues. Plus, President Trump weighs in on the controversy over the flag in the new movie, First Man, why he says he won't be watching it. Former U.S. Army Ranger Chris Tanto Peranto will give us his take as well. And the U.S. appears to have reached an impasse with North Korea over its plan to denuclearize. We'll have expert Gordon Chang here to weigh in all that and so much more coming up during this hour of America Talks Live. Talks live. Just wanted to make it more theatrical. Very dramatic today. What, what an opening. <laughs> In a <Yeah>. world. <laughs> uh, with only two of us here today, but uh, Dr. Gina Loudon is out on her book tour, but don't fear. She's yeah. going to be joining us a little bit later in the show to talk about. Going to be coming in to talk about the book. New We've got a book. 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 Yep. Yeah, there we go. Okay. We're going to be chatting all about that. Find mm -hmm. also get some uh, gossip on what's been happening in D.C. Yeah. She was in D.C. yesterday, so she's always good at that. That should be yeah. fun. She's a little bit of yeah. know. Meanwhile, uh, let's talk about there are some hearings going on today. Yeah, big hearings in the tech world. Yep. In addition to Brett Kavanaugh, this is day yep. two. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Google, Google are all in the hot seat today, easy for me to say, as representatives from each company are either there testifying or sending written testimony before the Senate Intelligence Committee. Lawmakers are grilling them over Russian interference in the U.S. election. They're also touching up on political censorship. As you may know, we've brought it up several times here on the program. A lot of conservatives up in arms saying that they've been censored. Shadow banned, censored, mm. their content throttled, right. stifled. But yep. in fairness, a lot of conservatives have also come to the defense saying these are private entities that have the right to do what they want to be doing. And that is Jack Dorsey, isn't that? That's that was Jack Dorsey, Dorsey, the, uh, the Twitter CEO. Twitter. Yeah, one of the founders, co-founders of Twitter and the current uh, CEO who's been, uh, he actually recently said, you know, yeah, we are biased. We yeah. definitely do have a left-leaning bias. We've got to work on that. But they really have, and I actually had uh, uh, Adriana Cohen, a, a columnist of the Boston uh, Herald, asked me yesterday, or it was the Glo or the Globe, I forget who she writes for, but she had direct message me on Twitter and said, can you see my tweets in your feed? People tell me I'm being throttled shadow banned. Right. And I went through my entire mm -hmm. feed, and I, we follow each other, we chat, could not see any of her tweets. Wow. So there's definitely something going on. And she's a relatively, she's a Trump supporter, she's a conservative, but she's hardly a firebrand. Right. She's a mainstream media columnist who's on the right, and I could not see one of her tweets in my feed. Right, and we've yeah. talked about some people not being censored while others, I think it was, was it Cambodia? It was Cambodia, uh, right? Yeah, yeah I believe Yeah, it was. there was a woman yeah. talking about socialism and how awful it was, and for whatever reason, it was... There was nothing negative about it, but some of the imagery uh, got her that, Oh, that's right, yes. Media. She was a candidate. Yes. And she used the imagery of Cambodia, I yeah. guess, post-Vietnam War, some of the atrocities, to say, hey, look, if you vote socialism into the U.S., this is what's going to happen here. Right. And, and they censored her content, right. So it'll be interesting to see. Also, uh, interesting to note, uh, we mentioned several social media sites. We mentioned Google. Google's not there in person. Now, they're sending written testimony, I believe, Google yeah. is. And, and it's got some people on Capitol Hill predictably upset. Yeah, but actually on yeah, both sides I, yeah. of the aisle. I mean, obviously yeah. the president, um, which has kind of been interesting because uh, the EU has kind of gone after Google, and then the president has kind of come to Google's defense. But when it yeah. comes to yeah. uh, conservatives, well, Google's not some, so much, and he's yeah. been really hammering And they've hard. had some search result issues where conservative think tanks and monitors have, have mm -hmm. searched for things on Google. The president's spoken about it. And it'll, re it'll return a majority of negative searches against conservatives and positive right. against the left for the same topic. Google's insisting that their algorithm is agnostic, politically agnostic, ideologically agnostic. But the results, even if anecdotally, mm -hmm. they're telling a different story. So it's going to be very interesting to see how hard... The senators go on this. Look, right. Ted Cruz has a unique grasp of these issues. He's been very, very good on this. Uh, so I think uh, he'll, he'll be one to watch oh, yeah. in these hearings. Yeah, and yeah. we're going to continue to monitor that particular hearing. And we'll, we'll now, try I don't to know if he's on intel, though. I don't know if he's going to be in this hearing, but even his comments. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll monitor his comments, and we'll monitor that hearing. And then also on uh, Capitol Hill, of course, is Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. He's back on the Hill today. Second day of his confirmation hearing to, of course, be nominated, well, be confirmed to serve on the Supreme Court. That's our top story.
So what you're looking at here is a live shot. Uh, you're going to be in just a moment. You're going to be looking at a live shot of the hearing there, Senator Lindsey Graham. Of course, this is the Senate Judiciary Committee. Now, things got very testy yesterday when there were several dozen interruptions. One media outlet counted 62 interruptions. Plenty wow. of protesters were arrested. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But here at Newsmax, we don't want to get uh, uh, too quagmired in what these protesters and the obstructionists are doing. We want to tell you about Kavanaugh's positions. This right. man is going to sit. That's, what, that's the whole that's point That's the of whole this. point of him being there. And he's going to be sitting on the United States Supreme Court. The decisions he renders that he hands down Could as part of the majority or minority will impact the lives of Americans for decades. And that's really what's most important. That's what we want to bring you. All the gossip and whatnot, it's fun to watch. But really, at the end of the day, the important part of this yeah. hearing is going to be what well, Brett Kavanaugh says what his positions are on things like abortion and gun control and, and states' rights and surveillance and the right to privacy and things right. of that nature. We're also going to have a former federal prosecutor, our good friend Larry Klayman. He's going to be coming in to break it all down for us. But first, uh, let's take a look at what's really behind uh, the Democrats' no hold barred tactics to oppose Kavanaugh's right. nomination. Democrats claim that they are upset because they didn't get the chance to review tens of thousands of pages of documents from Kavanaugh's judicial record. Well, but, but about, I, there was a 40, what was it, 42,000 It was a 42,000 page dump. The Democrats are being disingenuous there because it's really not his judicial record. Right. They've got 488,000 pages on his judicial record. They want to see records from his, his time, time as, as staff counsel. secretary in the White House, right. which is described by many as a, again, not to be redundant with a phrase, but a politically and ideologically agnostic traffic cop. As staff secretary, you take relevant information that's heading to the desk of the president, and if something is just open source news the president might have seen, you toss it aside. If something's relevant, potentially classified, you make sure that it gets on the desk of the president because right. it's a relevant piece of info. Right, but I think what they're trying to do here is prove that he is politically motivated, well, going, uh, sure. going against everything that he said yesterday. Or what they're going to do is they're going to, yes, yes, and the way they're going to do that, so mm -hmm. it's not or what they're going to do, you're 100% right, but what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, I should say, is when he worked for President George W. Bush, Bush 43, mm -hmm. if he was handing Bush things that said radical Muslim terror is on the rise in this region of Afghanistan, right. the Taliban is taking hold here. Uh, we have pro-abortion uh, uh, groups who are getting a little violent in Nebraska mm -hmm. and things of that nature. He may very well have also said, we've got a bank robbery problem in L.A. Right. They're going to omit that. They're going to say he's anti-Muslim. He's rabidly anti-abortion. He's rabidly pro-gun control. It's, it's irrelevant because that was his job was well, to give hot topics to the president. Yeah, and let's be honest, a lot of these Democrats didn't want to meet with him anyway, That's correct. and right. they're going to vote no no matter what these documents say. But Democrats' opposition has a lot more to do with the fact that, again, he right. is gonna, he'd be replacing this go-to swing vote in Anthony Kennedy and their well-known hatred for President Trump. Let's just be honest. And, and, and he won't be a swing vote. Right. So here to kind of help us break it down yes. so you really get to know who this man is, uh, is John Bachman. He's going to explain much more in this in-depth report. Take a look. The resistance was in full effect during the first full day of Brett Kavanaugh's Senate confirmation hearings. But this is by no means Kavanaugh's first time in the middle of a politically divisive and consequential moment in legal history. He got his first taste of that while working as Ken Starr's deputy during the Whitewater investigation. He was a key author of the Starr Report, which led to the impeachment of President Bill Clinton. He takes the oath and he's going to, uh, and this I am absolutely confident of, treat each issue, including these most delicate issues, with an absolute open mind. He will also have great respect for precedent. He has said that. Uh, he said it uh, in various and sundry statements that precedent, uh, including the Supreme Court's precedent, in its most controversial cases, uh, counts. He later worked as a staff secretary to George W. Bush and advised him on some of his most controversial decisions during the Bush administration's war on terror, including the detention and prosecution of enemy combatants. After working at the White House, Bush appointed Kavanaugh to the Washington, D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Since then, his judicial record has made it clear that he supports, as a University of Texas law professor put it, quote, the president's exercise of aggressive war powers. He was the lone dissenting opinion in the Heller gun ban case. Bloomberg's editorial board said it was a reason that, quote, Kavanaugh should be closely questioned on guns. 
Quote, in my view, Kavanaugh wrote, Heller and McDaniel leave little doubt that the courts are to assess gun bans and regulations based on text, history, and tradition, not by a balancing test such as intermediate or even strict scrutiny. As a federal judge, Kavanaugh also sided with the priests for life and religious employers who wanted to opt out of Obamacare's birth control mandate. Last year, he also wrote a dissenting opinion to a D.C. appeals court ruling that allowed a 17-year-old illegal immigrant to get an abortion without counseling. He was also a regular critic of Obama-era EPA regulations. In 2017, he wrote that, quote, EPA's well-intentioned policy objectives with respect to climate change do not on their own authorize the agency to regulate. Quote, congressional inaction does not license an agency to take matters into its own hands, even to solve a pressing policy issue such as climate change. It was his consistent conservative record that's won Kavanaugh praise from Trump critics in the Republican Party. I am a, a, a fierce critic of Donald Trump, but I'm capable of, um, of saying when he does something right, and I think in this case he, he did something uh, right. Uh, I knew Brett in the White House. He was staff secretary. Before that, he was worked in the legal counsel's office. He's meticulous. Uh, he's calm. He's temperamentally conservative. He's reliable. Everybody who worked with Brett um, had a very, very high opinion of him. While there are plenty of reasons for conservatives to love Kavanaugh, after Justice Anthony Kennedy's departure, there's nothing he nor any Republican senator can say on his behalf to change the minds of Senate Democrats. Kennedy, a key swing vote is out. Kavanaugh, a consistent conservative, is likely in, which will make it much easier for President Trump to implement his agenda. Kavanaugh could also potentially be a key vote if a dispute arises over the Mueller probe involving Congress's ability to impeach President Trump. So what is this fight about? If it's not about documents, if it's not about Judge Kavanaugh's credentials, if it's not about a judicial record, what is this fight about? I believe this fight is nothing more and nothing less than an attempt by our Democratic colleagues to relitigate the 2016 presidential election. You know, I, I really thought Senator Ted Cruz did an outstanding job. Well, this is in his wheelhouse. In his wheelhouse, he's a, yeah. he's a legal scholar, and let's. Uh, Welcome in our good friend, former federal prosecutor Larry Klayman, also the founder of Freedom Watch. Larry, thanks for being with us. It's always great to well, see you. I thought Ted Cruz did a great job. So yesterday, Larry, we spoke quite a bit about things the Democrats were doing to be obstructionist. Mm -hmm. You said you wouldn't have picked Kavanaugh, wouldn't vote for him, but let's because of the surveillance issue. But let's put that aside today. I want to tell the viewers about Brett Kavanaugh, the man he is. They just watched John Bachman's package on that. Right. What do you like about Kavanaugh? What has he done right in terms of judicial philosophy? First of all, I like his temperament, which isn't philosophy, but a judge is to look neutral, he's to look fair, he's to look caring, <clears throat> particularly for the homeless and other people in society. And people think that conservatives don't care about that. So it's important that he gets that across. Secondly, what he professes, and I was listening carefully this morning about how you decide cases. That's the way it's supposed to be, John. But unfortunately, that's not the way it is in practice. I have a number of judge friends who will concede to me and they'll concede to others that they decide what result they want and then they figure out how to get there legally. I hope that when Judge Kavanaugh does take the bench at the Supreme Court that he will follow the law and not cook the decisions as we've seen in many other instances. I mean, look, take a look at what the decisions, how they break at the Supreme Court. It's been 5-4 conservative majority consistently Right. The liberals on that court vote a particular way because they know where they want to go. The conservatives know where they want to go. It shouldn't be that way, but it is that way. And I hope that Judge Kavanaugh will stand true to what he said this morning in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. I want to go to something else that uh, Judge Kavanaugh said, and this is about impartiality. Uh, here's a look at what he had to say during his opening statement yesterday. Take a listen. My judicial philosophy is straightforward. A judge must be independent and must interpret the law, not make the law. A judge must interpret statutes as written. A judge must interpret the Constitution as written, informed by history and tradition and precedent. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Larry, but didn't you yesterday describe Judge Kavanaugh on this very program as an establishment pick, and doesn't that imply that you think his time in Washington under the Bush administration will somehow influence his decision making? I believe it will. Let's be honest about that. And one of the reasons that he's getting all these recommendations, like from Bob Bennett, who was the president's lawyer, Clinton, that is, 
during impeachment, during the Paula Jones case, everything else, is that these lawyers are going to come up against him at the Supreme Court. They're currying favor. This is part of the Washington Club. That's why they want Kavanaugh in there. They know him. They befriended him. He's befriended them. That's the way it works, unfortunately. And yes, a judge should be independent. But let me give you an example of where Kavanaugh was not. And it gets back to this national surveillance issue that was illegal under the fourth on the D.C. Circuit Court, found that it was a simply moot by preliminary injunctions and joining it because there was a new law that prevented doing what I had gotten an injunction to prevent. He wrote a decision saying, okay, the mass surveillance without probable cause is fine. He didn't have to do that. So he was a judicial activist there. He was telegraphing to his friends in Washington, mostly conservatives, mostly establishment, that I'll go along with this unconstitutional surveillance. Now, this morning, Senator Leahy asked a question whether he knew about George Bush's warrantless wiretaps right after 9-11, which clearly were unconstitutional. And he wouldn't answer the question. His eyes were flipping back and forth. He obviously knew about that. He was in on it. So he's not a perfect person. I think he will make a good Supreme Court justice as a whole, but I'm very concerned, and I continue to be concerned, about this Fourth Amendment issue. It's fundamental to our Constitution that you can't surveil people or spy on them without probable cause that they're committing a crime or communicating with terrorists. I, that's just not acceptable. Larry, let me ask you this, though. That has always been one of your one of your pet issues. And, and maybe I'm phrasing that improperly. Those have been the kind of cases that you tended issue. to litigate, yeah. a key issue mm -hmm. for you. So we typically agree, but devil's advocate, might you be a bit more critical of Kavanaugh because you guys were so diametrically opposed on this one issue than you would be of another judge? Yeah, I think you're right, John. We all are influenced by our experience. But that floored me when I saw that opinion that came out because he didn't have to write it. He was talking to people who ultimately would play a role in getting him nominated to the Supreme Court. And that's what bothers me about this insider club in Washington. It's a very close club. I've spent 25 years in Washington. I know about it. You know, when I ran for the Senate in Florida, I said, I don't want to be a member of the Senate club. I want to take a club to the Senate. Hmm. Uh, or, or to paraphrase Groucho Marx, I wouldn't want to be a member of a club that would have me as a member. That's my philosophy. So he is a different person than I am. And that's why I have the skepticism. But I think, I think on the whole, okay, I'm willing to go along with it now because we're far down the line. He needs to be confirmed. The Democrats, if we go further than October, are going to derail any nomination of President Trump. So the lesser of evils here, I, I think it's, I want to see Kavanaugh confirmed at this point. All right, in the short time that we have remaining, real quickly, before we say goodbye, I want to quickly shift gears and talk about President Trump's tweets this morning, just slamming, slamming journalist Bob Woodward's yep. new book. He tweeted, isn't it a shame that someone can write an article or book, totally make up stories and form a picture of a person that is literally the exact opposite of the fact and get away with it without retribution or cost? Don't know why Washington politicians don't change libel laws. He obviously has brought this up on the campaign trail before. But, Larry, before you tell us, and again, we're running close to the clock here, but before you tell us whether or not you agree with the president, can you explain briefly to our viewers what libel is and how it pertains to the First Amendment, also why it differs for public figures versus private? Well, I'm, actually, that's one of my specialties is libel, slander, defamation, as you call it generally. Uh, libel is when you say something which is false or misleading, and if you're a public figure, to be able to prove that and to get a jury verdict or a judge ju a verdict, there has to be malice. And I've won cases for public figures, and it's not impossible. And what's happening here with regard to the comments being made about President Trump, in my view, are made with malice. Now, I've had experience with Woodward, going back to the Chinagate days when I ran Judicial Watch. And Woodward has changed over time. He's not the same person he was during the Nixon era. And he was actually quite jealous that maybe that scandal might eclipse his Watergate scandal. So he wants another scandal. He wants to be, still be relevant. He's now working for Jeff Bezos, at, uh, the owner of The Washington Post who owns Amazon. He's got a total line. So I frankly believe little of what he wrote in that book. He's not the same person he used to be. So real quickly, do you think the president has a case? Yes or no? I think the president has a great case. Okay. And uh, I think he ought to file a case. And I've been urging him to do it on a number of fronts. 
So he may not even have to push for changing the laws. All go. right, Larry Clayman, always a pleasure Good to have you on the program. Oh. President Trump takes aim at Nike and the NFL in a new tweet. We'll talk about the backlash that Nike is facing after it chose Colin Kaepernick to be the face of its latest campaign.